All right, this morning's job in the engine room. We are moving this. So this is one of the three jobs that are stopping us from leaving the marina berth. So we're getting the orange frame taken off the uh, gen set and we're going to be putting it in the blue and white fiberglass box that's up there that came off our old uh, Fisher Panda Kubota gen set. This is an air-cooled gen set, but we're going to be putting air going in and air going out and it will have more cooling than what it has when it just sits there like that. So today's job, rip that thing apart. Brewpeg was a sunken fishing trawler that was stripped out and ready for the scrapyard. She's just completed a 10-year rebuild that's brought her back to life. With the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and subscribers, she'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the description below. Keen viewers may note that there's still mess and chaos everywhere in the engine room. This was prior to us having a really big cleanup, and we had several jobs on the go while we were pushing hard to be able to get the boat capable of sea trials. This week we go back in time a couple of months when Tom was still here with us. He helped us strip down our air-cooled 5000 watt AG generator. This generator was donated really kindly by Trev a couple of years ago to help us out of a real bind. We need to get this thing mounted properly. We need to get an air box around it so that we can quieten it down for sound. We need to put some ventilation in it so that we can actually air cool it whilst it's in the box. And we need to get an exhaust built so that we can get that out the top of the boat and not fume out ourselves inside the engine room. Right now the frame is off this, we've got nothing in the way over there, it's time to get that blue box mounted where this used to sit, then we're going to stick this guy in the blue box. We're going to use the original mount, these original rubber mounts here, they're very flexy, keeps this thing nice and quiet, also being in the box is going to quiet it down more. It is air cooled, so we need to have air coming in, air going out, that's pretty easy to manage. Now I want to spin it around, originally this panel I had sticking out at this end and that's because it was mounted in that frame and etc but it meant that the alternator was at the back end here and everything I needed to maintain was at the opposite end over by the hull which was a real pain so I'm going to spin it around and I'm going to turn this around as well what that means is that the front end of this you can see there I've got a pull start mechanism so if we ever need to if the electric starter's not working we can pull start it plus it also means oil changes and everything become much simpler and the uh, exhaust becomes a much simpler path as well having it on that side When I made this a long time ago, I made a couple of steel blocks, welded them in, and they're threaded, so I can put a hole in this uh, fiberglass housing and just bolt straight down to the back. And at the front here, we've just got a clearance hole. We can just put a bolt through and a nut on the bottom, and that's going to allow us to bolt that down pretty easily. Right, so there she is, bolted in pretty solid. We're going to start fitting the engine now, figure out what we have to do in terms of mounts and so on. So with the engine now lifted into the box, we can get a pretty good idea of where we need to put the engine mounts into the fiberglass box. Once that's measured up, the engine comes back out of the box so we can start working on the box itself. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah, if we if we put those blocks, if we put those blocks in, they're gonna I might just make them big enough to cover those holes. Because those holes must have been a mount. They're exactly Can we just box them in? Yeah, I reckon we just glue them in. No, say uh, fiberglass job. Yeah. That's two days' work right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we do. Agree. We do. Have Although we still got to fix those holes. Oh yeah, that's big as well. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say maybe. In those yeah. holes over there, so you still got to pull out the box. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. But yeah, just just one layer and still make the blocks big enough. Yeah. Go wrong. Well, I was just thinking like I've got my blocks measured like that, but I'll just I'll just make them whatever yeah. you know. Yeah, especially for up here. Yeah. 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 yeah cool. I'll let you. So I've got the base out. Here we go. I need a make these little square block pad things are going to be epoxy glued into the corner we need to lift the gen set up so time to go for a bit of a road trip over to the yard look what we found very cheap and it works i reckon that bit there will do the trick as you can see it's on the flat deck work truck there we go sand it up so i've radiused all the edges as well so that it's easy to get the fiberglass around this because we want to wrap some glass 
around it and so on. But I've also marked up 100mm blocks. So we'll get this cut up now and we'll start shaping it so that we can fit it into the, uh, where is it? This guy over here. Radio, corners all radiused up. What I want to do is get these surfaces level. So I want to find some sort of platform that I can stick on there, clamp it on, whatever, when we glass or glue this in so that we can get a, a nice even surface for the genset to sit on. Tom's back again. We are getting this box stripped down. So he's removed the two big uh, cable glands, these guys here, from the back of the box. We're about to use this pretty cool looking stuff. I've never seen this before, but it's like it's essentially a epoxy glue and it's a it mixes in the little dispenser nozzle thing that it's got which is pretty bloody awesome i've never seen that so we're going to glue these blocks of hardwood down that i made yesterday uh, i'm just about to go through clean up the likes of this sort of stuff here with a grinder so that we can glass onto it and then we should be able to have a box that's fairly well uh watertight we want to be fiberglassing to the inside of this box to cover up all of these old original holes and then we're going to fear them from the outside but to do that we need the fiberglass to stick so Tom's getting a fluff wheel and a grinder he's going around and giving everything a razz up so there's a nice mechanical key and then once that's done you go through with acetone and nuke everything so there's no oils that will stop the new fiberglass from sticking to the old fiberglass with the box now clean it's time to get some glass in so he's cutting out some double bias cloth we're going to start laying this over the holes to provide the strength we need for the fairing compound that will sit on the outside of each hole with the pieces of fiberglass cloth cut into the small sections that we need, we're using a West System epoxy to glue all of this down. Once the fiberglass is set, we fill all of the depressions that are left on the outside with a fairing compound, this green stuff you can see here, it's epoxy based. And then it's time just to go through and give everything a really good sand so it's nice and fair, so that we can start painting this to make it look lovely. Let that dry and then we can start getting this installed. that's happening Jess is out the back doing some dingy stuff so this is a foam adhesive type stuff you can see there we go it's sort of like a quite thick it's quarter inch six mil thick it's like a adhesive grippy stuff we're sticking it over the um, oven tray dingy because the sides get a bit hot so we're putting that on two reasons one to stop baking our bums in the hotter sun and also to act as a bumper on the side so that it doesn't damage anything a lot of people freak out and think aluminium dingy is going to destroy boats we're not really going to be going up alongside a lot of pretty white boats. We have a steel work boat. That comment was directed to a couple of people that had a meltdown in a Reddit group about the fact that that dinghy is a terrible design because it has aluminium tubes. I'd like to counter that with that thing is amazing in the waves. It doesn't bounce around like the inflatable tubes. That thing is an absolute awesome dinghy. I'm incredibly grateful that we were in a position to be able to build it. So, eh. The guys are just arriving back. They've grabbed some metal out of the back of the ute. So we've got some stainless and some alloy arriving. The alloy is going to be a part of a new dash and the stainless is going to be part of a new oil filter mount that Beck's building. Right, time to get the wee gen set into the little box over where it's supposed to sit. <laughs> oh 
all bolted down. We've got our hardwood blocks all glued in. These are mounted, ready to start drilling right the way through. We're going to put a bolt from the steel mount all the way through this block, through the fiberglass, and a big washer on the underside to bolt the genset in. Eventually, I was thinking I might even rubber mount this whole box um, if the noise proves to be a pain in the bum. Um, but for now, we're going to solid mount this box and rubber mount the genset inside the box. We'll just see how we go with that. The genset, you can see, is solid mounted to the frame, and then the frame gets rubber mounted to these timber blocks up here. Right, there we go, mounts on. Time to get this thing in the hole. So I need to change it from basically a muffler up the side here sticking out the side of the box because I need to be able to have the covers on and I can't have an exhaust coming through the side of the cover because then I'll never get the cover off. So what I want to do is take this off and modify it so it sticks backwards, faces backwards. So on the back of the engine, this is the cylinder here. We've got our decompression lever and this is the exhaust port. So it leaves, comes out sideways along here, goes into a muffler and then exits out the side over here. What I'm thinking of doing, cutting this guy somewhere in here putting a 90 degree bend, in fact I might bring it out, put a 90 degree bend sort of over quite far, and then this, flip it upside down and stick it backwards, which would mean the muffler sits across the back of the engine here. Ideally I want to come down this side, so plenty of space between the AC alternator and the fiberglass box. This is going to have soundproofing, so the size will come out slightly, but I'm thinking a hole down in there, which means I can then sort of go underneath the box and come up and go to the dry stack which is just beside us here. First step is getting this guy off and then flipping it around and starting to modify it. But before I do all that, I'm going to start mounting this so that it's not just randomly dangling everywhere. So to do that, I need to make a box to house this guy because this used to be bolted into the orange frame which is no longer part of this generator. And here's my box. So I've marked out, you can sort of see there's a bit of drawing on top of that. I've marked out where I'm gonna cut that. So it's gonna be a hole saw in the corners to get a nice radius and then we'll grind it just to get a nice pattern and that allows that plastic uh, display thing to bolt into it. It's exactly the same box as we use for our brunette box, this way up here. That one. So we use those because they're cheap, they're common, and they're sort of just an easy size to fit in places. And there we go, those corners that I just cut, just link them with the grinding disc, clean the edges up, and that's going to be a nice cutout. So the box I made for the control panel is um, needs to be mounted, but in order to do that, I'm going to stick the fiberglass covers on the genset so I can figure out where I can put this box without interfering with the covers. So Damien, do you need a monitoring system for that box? This could be marked too. Do you, do you even need to ask? No. <laughs> uh, I'm free it's, next week. It's what we do. Pretty much where it's going to mount, ignore the fact that it's upside down, it's just easier to clamp it that way, but what I'm thinking is if I can get these off like that, then it's a pretty convenient place to put this, so this one will be easy. Yep. This is the limiting factor one. So that's it mounted. You can see we've got an access panel on that side there. So the cabling will run out this corner here along the, the roof, that rib there, or the deck head. It'll go down, there's a rib at the back, it'll zip tie and P-clamp down uh, along that rib, come down to the bottom, and then go up and through the black base. So everything's sort of fairly neat and tidy. We don't have to worry about cable runs too much on this. We are going to bring a couple of pressure gauges from each um, minion, each air tank. So we'll be able to see independently what pressure each one of them is running at because these theoretically are our start batteries when we move to air start. So the, the cable run that's going to be from those sensors will join the cables that go from this uh, gen set, go across the roof via ethernet, potentially, um, either ethernet or copper cable, I'm not sure yet. Um, and then they'll join up in the brunette box over the back here, which Duncan is uh, just doing a bit more worrying to. So we're adding a few... Uh, lights and switches and possibly a, a RPM gauge later on. This is where the genset sits looking from the back. That's the box that we just mounted before. So you see I've started to do cable runs. So I've got that's 
run comes down from the side of the saloon that follows the wall down comes through the floor here and then goes off into this box here that's our power feed going back up to the boat this other one here let me spin that around you can see that one there working its way along there with p-clamps and then it comes down the side here and we're p-clamping it all the way down like so uh, what i need to do is get it through the box like that so you can sort of see it's working its way through that big hole but i need to make it cable safe that's not cable safe at the moment so we're going to do that with conduit just like that so using this sort of hard plastic conduit the split stuff that you can there we go get my finger in there and see if i can split it apart like that so you can split it down like that put it over top of the edges and then you coil it all the way around you end up with basically protection on both sides you can sort of see it there as well protection on both sides for any cables i managed to get a lot of the cabling up to here we're running out on some cables down the back let me show you so we've extended quite a few of the cables brought them up the back here so we're um ended up with what have we got three cables there'll be another three coming up so these cables plus this three core over here the two core plus earth sorry um that's essentially everything that controls this gen set oh there's this black cable as well that's everything that controls this gen set they'll be working their way along the roof and into the back of the box and then oh, let's get out if you're wondering why i'm struggling to get in and out it's because that's how much working space i've got between that that and the floor uh so Tomorrow's job is to get that fully wired up. This morning, it's taken me all day to realize this, but I should have just moved these. I've excavated more workspace. So my plan is to get this electrically hooked up today so that I can start on the exhaust. Okay, so what are you working on this morning? Uh, so focusing this morning on getting the voltage uh, reading on the volt current gauge here. Uh, the current sensor is already installed. It's up by the alternator there. And uh, this is a 12 volt gauge, but we've got a 24 volt system. So I'm just going to do a very, very simple resistor network which basically divides by two. Uh, so we're just going to remember whatever number we read there, we multiply by two. So that'll be the first point. And then uh, I'll start working on the, uh, the coolant temperature and then the oil temperature and pressure. Something Duncan put in yesterday as well. So we changed the RPM gauge because this one's got an hour meter. So that, that actually happened to start a bit of Elton John singing yesterday. <laughs> And very pleased to know that this engine has done 0.0, .0 hours in this lifetime. 9 a.m. <laughs> That's the one. In fact, it's cold as hell. So I've got pretty much everything extended now, all the cabling, and I've used different colors for everything. So originally it didn't have different colors for everything. There was quite a few blue things that were doing totally different things, like fuel shut off solenoid, oil um, level down here. They were both the same color. So we've avoided that and we've gone so we've got say blue i don't have blue so i've changed it to two purples etc in here it's looking pretty tidy the original battery used to mount down here we're going to get rid of that i'm going to put the battery on the outside of the box so that it doesn't get so hot and i can service it easy and what have you because it'll be a little lead acid um, but right now i'm going to go through with some um, self-closing braided line uh, conduit type stuff and cover all this up make it neat and then get it into some p-clamps following the line of that black cable there Right, so this braid now contains all of our cables. We'll come down to this end, you can see they come out and then so that it doesn't fray, I chuck a little bit of heat shrink on. This is a trick Duncan showed me. So put a little bit of heat shrink on the end, just squash it onto the wires themselves. And then that won't ever come loose and it doesn't fray because this stuff does fray quite a lot if you're you know, not careful. Um, but yeah, neat wee trick. So I've done that at both ends. We've got uh, one down there as well to hold that group. And then that'll come through neatly and pin up against that with another p-clamp we'll run like a double p-clamp here on these guys and then as it comes up the roof here we'll p-clamp along the top and then get it into the box and we can start doing the connections so on the side of the box you've got this open panel here you can sort of see my hand just sticking in it that's where all the cabling goes through there is a panel that i've cut three holes in it we're going to stick some grommets in that now so we can get them uh, the cables in and out neatly there we go with the rubber grommets just adding a bit more protection for those cables going through Right, there we go, panel in place, cables in the holes. Ugh. Tidying. We've been looking for a barbecue because we want to make food outside because it's so much easier in summer. Um, but we want a barbecue in the back of the boat, definitely. And uh, Duncan and I were 
fossicking around the yard just before we uh, we launched and we found this in the skip. Now, it's not in great condition. The outside looks fine, it needs a clean up. Needs a good clean. <laughs> I might need to replace these parts, but the outside's fine, it'll work. It's only like 20% of that has tetanus on it. <laughs> so um, it, looks, it looks like gas. But we think we might do charcoal if we, um, we might try and do gas or we'll see, but charcoal at least to start with anyway. So we've got to cook up a feast on the back. We'll put out a spread, that sort of thing. For those of you who know um, Sheldon, my hero. This bad boy was um, donated by Adam Miller. So it's a 400 watt wind turbine. It's a D400 is the model. These are bloody expensive. They're, they're like four and a half thousand dollars Australian normally when you buy them. This one's had the blade smashed. Um, it still works and everything functions as far as we know, but the blades have been uh, broken off because where it was mounted on Adam's boat, fishing rods and things like that would get chucked into the blades accidentally and the blades would just try and annihilate either the rod or themselves. So the blades are broken off. We've got the blades to get new new ones, um, but uh, we have a wind turbine that's been donated, which is flipping amazing. So um, thank you so much, Adam. Our plan on Brewpeg is to have two wind turbines, one on either corner. So this is a bloody good start. It's 50% of the way there, if you will. <laughs> and it's, it's a bit old, so we'll give it a good good, um, good workout and check it. And... it. It is old, but it's a fantastic um, model. They, they still make them exactly the same. They actually haven't changed the design. It's been the same for years and years because they're just so bloody good. Um, I know someone who can probably just check the electrics, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if only we knew an electrical professor. Hmm, interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> Another job. Pretty heavy. <laughs> it's really solid. I don't know what I don't know. What do you reckon it is? Probably. I can't lift it. Either. Twenty-five kg or something. Yeah. It's, it's bloody chunky. It, look, it needs a good bar. You know, we're gonna have to fix a bar at the top and. Yeah, I'll make a stainless pipe for it. And... Yeah, look what's it's. So uh, it's quite a thick ball, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. So it's got a, it's got um, slip bearings in here, so it can spin around indefinitely. It can rotate around without ever like wrapping up the cabling inside. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has little brushes up here and split bear uh. uh I can't probably name it. Basically, it's a it's a joint up in here that allows it allows it to rotate indefinitely. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. It's so amazing. Yeah, it is. It's flipping awesome. Yeah, when solar is not possible. Yeah. Um, but you know, with our with our ones, even you know, not great sunlight, we're still going to get plenty of power. But when there is no sun. Yeah. Or... And for people that think, okay, we're a motorboat, we're always going to have power whenever we're motoring. That is true. But there's always a fuel penalty. So the more we can generate with renewable sources, the less load we put on the engine, and therefore the less fuel we burn, and the further we can go with the available fuel we have. So, so everything that we do like this, like solar or wind or you know whatever it may be, extends the range of the boat and also reduces the carbon impact that we have by steaming around. Because we want to be independent as possible, I'm away from fossil fuels, and and that's what's kind of ironic about this boat. You know, it's, it was a fishing boat. It's not going to be fishing except for barbecue on the back. And um, it's um, recycled, basically recycled, but we want to have um, sustainable uh, energy sources as much as possible. And it's not completely possible, but we could go a long way. Dan was walking past and realised there was a scale that's sitting, just sitting there, just just ready to weigh this thing. What did you guess? You guessed. You guessed twenty-five kgs. I was thinking more than that. Seventeen point five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're looking tidy, but you know, it always goes somewhere. This is on its way down, migrating slowly downstairs. The back end of the boat is about a thousand times cleaner than it was. I still need to tidy up the bench, but everything else is just a few random bits and pieces to put away. Everything else is pretty much done. Good after morning. We're still in the work berth, which means we can still build some stuff. So let's get into it. So you saw that we had some success with the big exhaust and that shroud. Let me introduce you to the next job to get done. Tucked in the corner of the engine room is this box and inside we have our 5 kilowatt AEG air cooled generator or as it's known to friends Jenny! What I need to do is get the exhaust out of this box down underneath and then back up. This is the water trap that's for the main exhaust and you can see this little ball valve just there. Any water that comes down the main stack, that's the main stack there, gets caught in this big trap and you can have a bucket load of water in here, about 10 litres of water before it actually starts getting close to coming along this straight piece and then that straight piece along the roof and then down into the turbo. So it takes an awful amount of work to actually get 
water uh, into the engine on Brewpeg, which is a positive thing. We're gonna do exactly the same sort of thing on the exhaust for this guy, uh, basically a water loop so, and with a drain at the bottom so that no water can get into the engine from the outside. Right, one thing before I forget, there is a bit of a debate about whether we can combine exhausts into the main stack. Now, I don't know enough, I suppose the easiest answer to that is I don't know enough about that situation to be able to say if I can or I can't. From an engineering point of view, absolutely I can. It's a piece of cake to put the exhaust into this, like put all the other exhausts into this one. However, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing for the other engines and so on. So for example, if the gen set, this little wee five kilowatt gen set that we're working on here, if that's not running and we've got the main engine running, it's gonna theoretically back feed pressure and exhaust gas into the small generator, which is gonna be a really bad thing for that generator long term. So you can do little valves, you can get electric valves that block off exhaust and things like that, but you're opening up the possibility of something going wrong. If the valve doesn't work, you can theoretically create harm in the in the small engine of the two. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be there if you do two completely separate exhaust stacks. So, in order to reduce risk, and because I don't know enough about the situation, I don't know what I don't know, I'm gonna do completely separate exhaust for every engine in the boat. So we will have three exhausts sticking out the roof of the funnel, um, up the top end of the boat. We're gonna have our six inch main exhaust, this guy here. We're gonna have a one and a half inch exhaust for the five kilowatt gen set, and we're gonna have a three inch exhaust for our 50 kilowatt gen set when that gets mounted into the boat. And all three of them will go up through this channel here and then up to the top of the boat. So here we go. So this muffler is quite big for the size engine. So I'm gonna keep it because of that, because obviously we can shut it up a little bit if we have this muffler on it. We won't be using this bracket in its original location. I'll keep it on the muffler because I'll, I'll need to make another bracket to hold this muffler, it's, it's quite heavy. Um, but uh, it'll be spun around the back of the engine. I don't know where it's gonna bolt yet, so we'll just leave that for now. The original outlet, we're gonna utilize that. We're gonna be putting something straight onto that, probably a flange of some sort, but we're gonna be putting a pipe essentially straight onto that there. Um, and then over here, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cut this and bend it around and do whatever I need to do, or if I'm gonna to have to make a flange and come off it separately. So let's just start cutting and see what we can come up with. All right, I've had a thought. Every 90 degree bend that you put into an exhaust reduces its efficiency. Now this is a 90 degree, a hard 90 degree, right after it exits the engine cylinder head. So rather than come out into a hard 90 and then go into another hard 90 as I rotate this muffler around, what I'm thinking I'll do, slice this off and use this as a flange, slice this off here, slice this off here, and then bring that around and put a little bit of pipe in so I can still get my bolts and nuts, etc., studs into these exhaust flange here, but I end up with a straight pipe coming straight out into the muffler so that we gain a little bit of efficiency rather than having this little dog leg here. So what we're thinking is we'll weld that onto that flange there. There's a bit of a gap to fill up, but that's easy enough with TIG. Weld that onto that guy there, and then we have our straight pipe straight into the muffler. So the extension came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. The welds are a bit awkward because it's welding two different metals, but also different thicknesses, and it's a bit of a pain, so they're not super pretty, but I don't think we're going to have any leaks out of that. And it also tucks it nicely down the back of the engine. It's, at, it's on a slight angle, so it'll sit on the engine kind of like that. So cylinder head vertical up here, it kind of sits on a 45 degree. So it actually tucks the exhaust down and away from the top a wee bit. There we have it, bolted up. So you can sort of see the angle that it sits. It's quite an angle on this engine. Um, but that is quite good because it tucks the exhaust right down low in this corner over here. I've just swapped out the engine mounts. These are the original engine mounts and you can sort of see they've got, they're quite soft, there's a lot of flex in them. Um, they were great, but we've found in the boat, stiffer mounts actually work better. So we found that on the compressor over the back here. Um, when we had soft mounts on there, thinking that that would isolate sound and make them nice and simple, it actually got quite a lot of oscillation going on whenever the boat moved and things like that. So we changed the hard mounts, made a huge difference in terms of noise. We've done exactly the same in this. So we've got the same mounts on this as we do holding a little compressor. Um, and they're much stronger than the original, so we should have some that will last a, a lot longer, hopefully. So now that we've got our engine height right, we can start working on the exhaust. 
as you can sort of see, it's got a bit of an angle there. We need to start working out exact positions of everything. So before we get too carried away, this is a pretty standard piece of kit when you're building exhaust. You just buy a U-bend like this, and it's a mandrel bend. So mandrel basically means that it keeps the same size all the way through there. Some benders will crush this inner part of the tube in, and you end up with a squeezed piece of tube around here. So mandrels are really important to make sure you keep the right flow. They're not much more expensive than... Uh, a, a, like a crushed piece, but they're just way better in terms of performance. So if you can, always try and aim for mandrel. The other thing uh, is to get your tube shrunk or uh, expanded. So this one's been expanded, and then you can do the equivalent where they squeeze it down. But what that allows you to do is this. When you're putting your exhaust together, you can just slide it on and weld it. And it makes things, so, and you just put a line across it that way so you get the angles and everything right. It makes it so much faster and easier when you're putting exhaust together. So with a few of these sort of parts, we can essentially just kit set the exhaust together and then TIG weld everything up. So the muffler's now in place. With that piece I showed you with the expanded joint, that can just slide over top of the muffler, like that. There we go. And then this, we can either weld this directly to the muffler or uh, we can make essentially a slip joint. So I'll show you what a slip joint is on the main exhaust. So this is our main exhaust stack. This is the, the water trap, this part here, where the water accumulates if we get any in the top. And this, from here on up, is the vertical piece we made recently that goes up to the stack at the very top of the boat. Now, this part of the tube has been expanded, so it's gone from six inches to a touch over six inches, so it can slide over this piece of pipe. And then about halfway has been cut with these slots, so you can sort of see they're about an inch deep, 25 mil, something like that, all the way around here. And then you've got this big band clamp. It's essentially a big hose clamp. You can kind of see that sort of bolt there. That basically just tightens up. That whole thing slides down much easier with two hands, but that whole thing will slide down and it will sit across this area here and clamp this tight to this pipe here. And you put a bit of exhaust gasket sealant in there when you squeeze them all down and everything. And then you put this band clamp on and that's a, um, a, an exhaust tight joint. So that's one way that you can join pipes if you don't want to have a flange in a particular area. This is one final way that you can do uh, an exhaust joint. So basically this is a, what's called a V-band clamp. Essentially it's like a hose clamp, but it clamps, if you can see down there, this piece and this piece are separate. Here's that same clamp pulled apart. So you can sort of see the, the anatomy of it. You've got this V piece of steel, this V-shaped steel here, which clamps up tight like that. If you pull that in, imagine that pulled in with the bolt that normally pulls these two pieces together. And what that does is it allows these two really highly machined surfaces to, to clamp together. So they sit like that. You can see there's basically nothing to escape out of there. So you don't need to put any sealant in these. These are machined to a tight enough tolerance that they'll seal just by having those faces clamped together really tight. And that V-band clamp clamps them tight enough to do that. So what's the anatomy of Jenny's exhaust? We're gonna do the slip joint up on that muffler because it's a really easy way of joining it at that muffler and we've got enough overhang of the pipe going inside the other one so that we can do it without it leaking. We're gonna use a V-band clamp, not far behind that. So we need to make a, a bit of a wiggle of pipe that leaves the muffler, leaves the box, and then sort of is ready to go up the exhaust stack. It has to be quite short because we have to be able to wiggle this whole section of pipe in and out whenever we take the, uh, the exhaust off. So we're gonna use the V-band clamp outside the box of, that the genset is sitting in and then we're gonna have essentially a straight run from there all the way up the stack. So we need to take the exhaust out, and what I'm thinking is taking it out, that green hole there. I reckon that's a perfect candidate for a big hole saw, and then putting the exhaust out through that back corner. And that's my plan, is to get it out the box like that. And then this here can, there's enough room that I can slide that off, and then we can wiggle that round and get that out of the box. So I think that'll work. Let's take this together. So we've been thinking about how to protect this bench from like sparks and things like that going over the side into the water and also all of these windows. And what we're thinking of doing is big welding blankets and using them as curtains. So making some sort of rail or something across the back so that it stops all stuff going over the back end. And also maybe something across here to stop anything going towards the windows. And that way we can just pull them out when we need them. Cause we're gonna be working out here for a while. You can see I've got a little line going across there that if I get, put those together flush like that, and I've got that line in line like that, I know that I'm gonna have all of my angles correct. We're doing a um, tidy up of the YouTube box, finally, finally. And uh, this is one drawer. 
Yeah, we've got our sort of organisation here. Camera. Boat thingies. There's batteries. Helper. <laughs> Helping doing the last bits in the drawer. Pretty clever girl. <gasps> what a good girl. Thank you, baby. Oh, it's a big job, baby. You need to rest now in your drawer. You're so cute. Hey, you love your spots. Any box that needs to be climbed into. <laughs> Any box will do. Happy girl. She's had a, a rabbit leg um, to snack on for dinner. And she's very excited because she got to crunch bone. Get like a big girl now. Big wild girl. Big wild girl. So with it assembled, you can see you've got virtually no room at the top here. And on that side, it looks awful because it's pretty much hitting the box. The simple solution would be to extend it back out. But at the top here, you can see obviously we're going to run out of pipe if we do that. So I don't want to extend this back at all. I want to push this hard up against that muffler if I can. So I've got as much muffler sticking inside this pipe as possible. So what I will do is cut down here and extend it. But at the same time, because of this being on an angle, this here is pointing up in the wrong direction. It's pointing basically towards the back of the boat, or sorry, the front of the boat over there. So what I'm going to do is cut it here, put a piece of pipe in there so that I can extend it out there, but I'm also going to rotate this pipe so it comes up to be more vertical like that. So it's going to be a much nicer uh, exhaust pipe sort of layout on this side, outside of the box once we're finished. There we go, extension tacked in. So you can sort of see there's plenty of, plenty of room with everything there. It's still a piece of cake to get it on and off. I'll probably solid mount it into here because I don't need to rubber mount it because it's obviously at that point we can solid mount it without any issue. And then this here will still move as the engine moves on the rubber mounts. This here will still move. So I'll put the V-band clamp right there. Weld that on like so. And then straight into that, I'm going to be doing a flex joint so that we can eliminate any flex. All right, so it's welded together and I've welded on our slip joint. So that's sitting like that. The other end of the slip joint is welded to a flexi. So exhaust flexi allows you to have quite a lot of bend going on in your exhaust pipe. So any jiggling that's over here, we can not transfer it up the pipes here. So we can basically start to eliminate that side of it. The pipe comes from here and it's going to work its way up here. So basically follow the line of this pipe here straight up. And there's a space just in front of this pipe here through the deck that goes out onto the rear deck area, up through the shroud that sits at the back end of the cabin and then out the roof right at the very top. Now, what we need to do is have a blower in this engine room that pushes hot air from the engine room, sucks the air from the engine room and pushes it up this um, essentially air column all the way up. We need to get these pipes through, but it also has to be completely sealed off so that that air can then be pushed up. I need to come up with a plan as to where we're gonna mount the fan. The fan's, fan's reasonable size. It's a, I think it's a 12 inch diameter fan from memory. So 300 mil, it's probably 350 mil diameter by the time you get all the other bits and pieces onto it. Uh, and then I need to figure out where that's gonna go and then also how I'm gonna build the box arrangement that will eventually go in here so that we can then take account of that when we build the exhaust. It's not as simple as just throwing an exhaust up this hole. I think I figured out how to do it. Beside me, I've got this big white box. This is our holding tank. This is one of it, one of the two holding tanks that we put into the boat. We're going to be putting an air compressor between this exhaust um, S bend here, this this big guy here, and the holding tank. So there'll be a second air compressor in this boat over here. We have two air compressors because we will eventually have air start on this boat, and we want two air compressors, two air reservoirs, so that we have multiple ways of redundancy to have our air starter always work. And then we'll have a full rebuild kit of that air starter on the boat. So if we ever have any problems like that, we can fix anything on the boat. However, that's down the road. You'll see that in a future episode, 412, I believe it's planned for. So with the air compressor mounted here, we don't necessarily have a lot of space on the lower part, but we have plenty of space up here. So what I'm thinking is mount the compressor in the lower part here, like we did with the other compressor. Mount the big air fan up here, blowing, sucking from the engine room and blowing this way towards me. And have the box do a U-turn and be in this particular area up here so we can encapsulate this whole area of the exhaust and have the box about sort of yay deep so it'll be as deep as the fan is around so the diameter of the fan down will be the depth of the box and the box will be located basically between these two beams of steel on the roof coming down here and about as about as deep as the top of this s bend here if that makes uh, visual sense and then the exhaust coming from this side here can come up and over from this side and come into the box on this side so it should be should be a relatively simple way of doing it. So now that we've got our path sorted out, I need to start getting this into its correct position. You can see there's a bit of droop on there if I don't support that. So what I need to do is make a bracket that goes between this engine mount and here so we can solid mount that part of the exhaust 
to the engine so that it will be rigid and the weight isn't taken by this end of the muffler. And that's the little bracket I made to hold the exhaust. Put a slot in the end because we need to be able to pull the exhaust in and out. If I put just a hole, that'll never happen. And that's it in place. Now, I need to tack this in this exact um, orientation location. I can't have anything change direction because it won't bolt up correctly. But I don't want to drag the welder from the back deck down to the engine room just to do this one little tack. So I have a trick. Sometimes I use hot glue to set this and then go up and weld the other side of it. Yes, hot glue, indeed, on an exhaust. So it only has to hold for two seconds whilst I'm able to tack this at the other end, so up, up the top, and it saves me having to drag the welder around. You could theoretically do this with a stick welder. No one wants to see that. No one likes seeing exhaust welded with stick. There we have it, hot glued into place, but I can weld perfectly onto that side there. So I pop one small tack on there, and this whole thing obviously starts to burn off because it's hot glued, but you can then just get rid of it. You can wait for it to fully dry and it'll come off as one big lump. We'll clean that up as we go. But basically gets rid of it enough that you can weld the other side without it contaminating the weld. All welded up and you can see what happens. It basically runs away from the weld. So obviously you tip the weld down like a, a slight angle down like that so it can run away with gravity. But you don't end up with any uh, crap going into your weld because it all, as soon as it gets hot, it starts to back away from that weld. With everything bolted up, we now need to do the straight. I think we need to come up 450 mil, roughly, from where the tape is sitting on that flex joint because the new pipe slides down inside this one. So if we assume it slides down to say here, 45 is going to give us a nice clearance on the roof. I have this piece of pipe, I've got one there and I've got one over that side there. But these have been pre-expanded, you can see there, and at the other end, same deal, pre-expanded. It's a 90 that's been welded on, you can see that to a piece of straight pipe that we got from the scrapyard. So I'm going to be using these couple of bits of uh, pre-bent pipe to form the rest of the exhaust. It's coming along, I've got the slip joint built on this, so basically it's just slid over like you saw before. I've cut four slots and put a decent T-clamp on there. Got our mount down here all welded and bolted, we've got our extension, our V-band clamp's working, we've got our flex joint in here, and it comes up, does a 90, does another 90, does another 90, and it sits right up tight against the exhaust here. So this is the piece that I've got coming down, it's just sitting there for now, and this piece here is going to sit about there so you can kind of see it in context with the other pipes a couple of inches of clearance everywhere but what i want to do is build a little solid mount or it'll actually be a rubber mount so it'll be a solid bracket the rubber mount and then another bracket coming off this this whole s bend is actually heavy wall pipe so from this point here this 90 this 90 this 90 and this straight is all schedule 10 pipe um this all came out of a uh what is it a drinks plant uh, like a bottling plant that's local uh, this is all 316 stainless so i found it in the scrapyard and i thought that's an absolute perfect s bend for the exhaust so that's why i grabbed that years ago um, but it's heavy enough that i can start actually welding our brackets onto this for the other exhaust because i want to i want to mount the exhausts together as a group of three so it'll be this exhaust the the small exhaust the big exhaust and then the the medium exhaust that's going on our big gen set they'll all be bolted together at, um, all the way up the stack so they don't rattle onto each other that mount's now put in, I can start building the next part, which will be a little piece of stainless that does a bit of a dog leg back like that, just a sort of a flat piece like so with a couple of bends in it, just to lift that up, and it will slide across and sit underneath this pipe, and the pipe will sit up there somewhere like that. And then that's the mount sitting where it's supposed to sit, so I'm going to weld this pipe onto this stainless bracket now, and then we can start connecting this guy here, the uh, the big vertical piece, into this piece here, and we'll start working on that, uh, the, the run all the way up to the top of the roof there. All welded. I've now moved this over to line up with the pipe, so let's go and straighten it up and get it actually slotted in. Down the bottom you can see where that pipe sits in, so now we just have to straighten it up so that we can actually get it plugging in properly. Alright, plugged in, that's where it's going to sit, so you can see it's got heaps of clearance on the cabin and the main 6 inch exhaust. It's pretty windy on the top of the boat, so we've probably got bugger all volume or terrible wind noise. Let me show you how I'm doing the top of the exhaust. So it gets mounted to the front and slightly to the side of the main exhaust. 
We will probably lift it up from here, but this gives you a rough idea as to where it comes up that exhaust stack. Right, it's too windy to record a lot of volume up there, but in all matters of aesthetics on Brewpeg and of the heart, Jess is involved. So she signed off the fact that we're going to have it a certain height, stick it back a certain amount, and the overall design. Bit of a 45 cut onto the end. It's time to join these two pieces of pipe together so that we can have a big long piece of exhaust pipe. Exhaust now joined. Time to try and get this up the top. With this pipe, it's pretty small and pretty light, so I reckon we've got a good chance of getting it up from the bottom. The big one we couldn't do, the, obviously the six inch exhaust, there's no way we'd be able to get it up from the bottom, we had to get it from the top. But this one, reckon we got a good shot. All right, so that fits. So this is gonna be mounted parallel to the main exhaust here. I don't, I don't want this to be able to flap around and do that as we're like steaming along or whatever. So I want this to be solidly mounted up here to this to this main exhaust. This is pretty stiff on its own right, so the more that we start adding stuff in, so this exhaust will be mounted to this one, the next exhaust that comes down here will also be mounted to it, so the three of them will provide quite a lot of support to each other. So I'm not gonna, I also need to account for um, growth in the pipe. So as this pipe gets hot and this one stays cold, so for, for example we're an anchor, the main engine's not running, so this is cold, this one will be whatever the temperature of the exhaust of the uh, genset, this one's going to grow slightly and this one isn't. So I can't just solid mount it and bolt them together. That just won't work. It'll crack something. So what I'm going to do is actually do a, a, a clamp at the top here. Same sort of clamp that we put on the uh, main exhaust to hold it onto this roof that I'm standing on. We're going to basically clamp around it like that so that it can grow and expand and contract if it absolutely needs to. And it'll be mounted on a right angle using this bracket up here on this main exhaust. So without having any angle iron on board the boat, we'll knock up a quick right angle bracket using some flat plate. We're trying to figure out how to protect this whole area from sparks and things, we don't get sparks in the window, and we found a welding blanket we went through a nice neutral colour. Introducing neutral rescue yellow. So you can see it sort of covers quite an area. Basically all of those windows where, where the sparks sort of go towards are covered up. So that's a welding blanket, it's pretty hardy, it's a fiberglass based blanket, so it means a lot of stuff, sparks and things like that, can't actually get through it. So we're getting one of those blankets as a test, and then if, it, if it's a decent one, we're gonna stick one behind here as well, like a curtain, so this whole back end will be curtained off so that we can protect anything going into the water and also onto the cabin of the boat as well. wasn't what it was after. I couldn't really show you it welding because the wind was being a pain but that's what it came up like. I had to sort of guard the thing from the wind so you wouldn't have seen anything. But it came up pretty good so that's how I, we've, when I can't just bend a piece of steel, I put a cut about three quarters of the way through and then just weld the back end of it up and it cuts perfectly on the line and then you get a nice strong join. It's a pretty nice day out here. It's like I don't know, 15 knots, something like that. Stinking, stinking hot, and having that breeze is kind of blooming refreshing. All right, some good, let's go get some clamps and drill and bolt this. So the anatomy of this mount is gonna be like this. So you can see you got your U-bolt type clamp here, and then we're gonna have a bolt here and a bolt here. We're gonna drill through this flange on the original exhaust, um, and that's gonna hold that, and then what that does, is gives us space here for the uh, third exhaust when we get that gen set installed. You may be thinking that the exhaust and the smell and stuff that's going to come out of here is going to make this pipe black and absolutely that will happen and that's of no concern to us because this is a work boat and we've got bigger things to worry about than if our exhaust is slightly dirty. Our mate Michael heading out to sea. That's a prawn boat, shrimp if you're from America. So little wooden boat. That thing is an amazing boat. He bought it a few years ago and that thing just works and works and works. There we have it, bolted up nice and tight. So there's a wee bit of flex in there because we've got our rubber mounts down the bottom for this main pipe, but everything else is nice and rigid. And this here can grow up and down if it really needs to, and this, it can slip in this if it needs to, but there's also a slip joint down the bottom so it can expand at the bottom if it needs to as well. We've also got that flex pipe so that can deform as well. So there's a lot of areas where this pipe can move if it needs to. It is a long pipe, it might be best if we put a bracket halfway down, but for now we're just going to try it as is. Now, the next exciting part, starting the gen set. I can't do that because we need to wire up the electronics for it and I need to put a fuel system in it. This thing used to be gravity fed fuel. We don't have that anymore. It's going to have to be a pump arrangement and I need to figure out what we need to do to make that work. Before I sign off, we've got a couple of exciting things that we want to share with you guys. 
It's heavy and clean. <laughs> So some cool news, we're able to stay here in the work berth. So um, we were pushing and busting ass to get the bollard on and get the boat capable of moving. Um, we are capable of moving right now. We don't need to move right now, which is the cool bit because the berth that we were going to go to, we're not allowed to do any work. We're not allowed to do any welding or painting or sanding or anything like that. Where we are right now in the work berth, we're allowed to do all of that. So we're able to stay in this berth up until March of next year. So more than enough for what we need to do. The Marine has found a way to make it really affordable for us. So we're able to save $700 a month over what we were paying on the normal work berth charges. So unbelievable support from these guys. These guys have looked after us for a decade and they're still doing it. They're bloody awesome. So huge thank you to um, Bundaberg Port Marina for taking care of us. We've also got some amazing gear that's been donated to the boat and I can't wait to show you some of these things. There's an anchor roller that is the most gorgeous anchor roller I've ever seen on a boat um, that was built for us by Daniel in the States. I cannot wait to show you that. We just got off a video chat with Burke. Flights have been booked. He's going to be back on the boat uh, towards the end of January so we're really excited to have him back um, it's going to be so cool he's so damn awesome to have on the boat and it's going to be fun to have him back on the episodes as well you got ice